Hello and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Show. I'm Rich Daly and it's Saturday, November 29th, 2014. On today's show, I'll be discussing the Tough 20 Episode 10 show that featured the fight between Eisen Daly and Jessica Penny. And I'll also talk about a couple of the other happenings from the Tough 20 Episode 10 show. Okay, getting started here. The Tough 20 Episode 10 show that featured the fight between Ising Daly and Jessica Penny took place Wednesday, November 26, 2014, and aired on the Fox Sports 1 network at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. This was the second quarterfinal fight of this season of Tough, and was another interesting fight as well. Taking a look at the two ladies fighting in this episode, Ising Daly is 26 years old and hails from Ireland. She has a record of 14 wins and 5 losses and was ranked number 5 in the first episode of the season. Eisen Daly defeated number 12 ranked Angela Magana in her first fight of this season of Tough to move on in the tournament to face number 4 ranked Jessica Penny. Eisen Daly has 5 wins by KO or TKO, 7 wins by submission, and 2 wins by decision. In her loss column, Eisen Daly has 1 loss by TKO and 4 losses by decision. Daly was the underdog to win this matchup since her opponent was ranked higher in the Tough 20 season opener. And moving on to Jessica Penny. Jessica Penny is 31 years old and hails from the USA. She has a record of 11 wins and 2 losses and was ranked number 4 in the first episode of the season. Jessica Penny is also the former Adam Waite champ from the Invicta FC organization and defeated the number 13 ranked Lisa Ellis in her first fight on this season of Tough to move on in the tournament to face number 5 ranked Eisen Daly. And on a side note that I mentioned on the episode 10 preview show that I did, uh, one of Daly's losses is to Lisa Ellis, and uh, Jessica has defeated Lisa Ellis twice now. So using that bit of MMA math, that might also make one think that Jessica Penny might also come out as the winner um, in this matchup here. Uh, Jessica Penny has two wins by KO or TKO, seven wins by submission, and two by way of decision. In her loss column, Jessica Penny has only two losses, and they are to two tough opponents. Her last loss was to Michelle Watterson by submission in April of 2013 for the Invicta FC Adam Waite title, and her other loss was by way of decision to Zoila Grigel back in 2010. The fact that Jessica Penny is ranked number four on this season of Tough, combined with the fact that she's the former Invicta FC Adam Waite champ, and the other factoid that I mentioned uh, regarding the win she has over Lisa Ellis versus the fact that Daly has lost to Ellis pretty much made Penny the favorite to win this matchup by most fans. Um, I think most other people thought that was going to be the case as well. On the preview show that we did, Eddie picked Eisley Daly to win by TKO, Uh, But I went the opposite way. I went with Jessica Penny to win by decision in two. Eddie thought that the fight was going to be a stand-up fight, and that sort of fight would likely have favored Daly. But uh, I thought Daly might get off to another slow start, as she did against Angela Magana, and that the fight would go to the ground where the submission skills of both of these fighters would cancel out that skill set, causing the fight to end in a decision. Daly was feeling a bit isolated. Some of that might have been her own doing because she seemed a little conflicted with what was going on. I guess she had a couple of other issues there as well. Um, but she was feeling that uh, Jessica Penny had developed more of a bond with the coaching uh, staff of, of Team Pettis, and I, I think she was probably pretty spot on with that. So that was a you know a bit of a valid concern for her there. I don't know if that really had anything to do with the outcome of the fight or not. But Daly went ahead and she used that motivation stating that she's not really there to make friends and that her focus is on becoming the inaugural UFC women's strawweight champ. Okay, Penny also seemed to have some issues in the back of her mind that were bothering her as well. When Conor McGregor showed up in the tough gym to say hello to Daly and share some words of encouragement with her, he stopped in to say hello to the ladies on Team Pettis. But there was a bit of a odd tension in the room, and and McGregor wasn't really warmly welcomed. But most notably, that the frosty reception came from Jessica Penny. Uh, She seemed very standoffish there, but it wasn't just her. It seemed like 
almost if the ladies resented the fact that Connor was there. After the show was over, this episode was over, and the tough talk show that followed this episode of The Open Fighter, Penny stated that she didn't really appreciate the big production that they made out about uh, Connor McGregor showing up there. And uh, she said she was also focused on the weigh-ins and that she thought that the McGregor appearance and production could have waited until after the weigh-ins were over. So I don't know if that was justified in the way that she acted, but uh, she was you know, noticeably perturbed that he was there. Conor McGregor quite clearly sensed that tension in the room, uh, not only from Penny, but also from the other ladies there as well. But aside from Daly greeting Connor warmly, Joanne Calderwood and Alex Chambers also greeted Connor warmly by giving him, giving him a hug. And uh, that pretty much ended the warm reception that was given to Connor McGregor. McGregor leaves the gym shortly after that frosty welcome and leaves Daly with some words of encouragement stating that they can't break us. I'm going to go ahead and guess that had something to do with the perceptible tension that was obvious when Connor went in to say hello to Team Pettis. So. Yeah, it was uh, kind of odd. I, I thought they would have been a little more welcoming to uh, Connor McGregor. Pretty much everybody seems to like that guy, with the exception of some of the male fighters. <laughs> but uh, that's understandable because he kind of rubs some of the other guys the wrong way. Okay, let's move on to the fight. All right, I'm going to get my brief breakdown of how I saw things. Round one, Daly comes out stalking Penny. Both ladies land a few shots. Penny gets poked in the eye, and a brief break takes place to allow her some time to recover. Penny tries for a takedown in the first movement of round one, but struggles doing so. The ladies tie up, and the action goes up against the cage. Daly seems to be the more powerful of the two fighters when the action is up against the cage there. Uh, they separate and start boxing in the center of the octagon for a minute or so, and then they tie up again. For the last minute of round one, the ladies go back to boxing, with Penny getting the better of the things in the final minute. After the round ends, Daly complained about being poked in the eye from Penny, and that was in the closing flurry of punches that Penny landed to close out the round. The ref acknowledged the fact that he was aware of the foul, and he gave uh, Jessica Penny a warning to watch her fingers. Uh, round one was pretty close, uh, closer than I thought it might be. Um, Daly came out a lot stronger and more sure of herself in round one than she did in her fight against Magana, and stronger than I actually expected her to as well. I thought she was going to get off to a slow start. But it was a tough round to score, but uh, I scored round one 10-9 Daly. I thought you know she did outpoint Jessica Penny in that round. Okay, moving on to round two. Daly comes out even more confident in the opening of round two. The action started out pretty much the same as round one early on with Daly landing a couple of punches, but Jessica Penny took total control of round two, outpointing Daly throughout the round with punches, and she even managed to get the fight to the ground and scored some more points on the ground. Jessica also finishes round two, dominating the action and landing punches at the close of the round. And aside from the opening of the round, round two was pretty much all Jessica Penny. So I scored round two, 10-9 Penny. And apparently the judges scored things the same way that I did there. The judges uh, scored the fight even after two. So the fight went to a sudden victory round, which is a round three. And going to round three, Daly starts out round three aggressive again and foregoes the advice of her corner, which was not to make the third round a brawl, but to take Penny down. Daly lands a couple of punches, follows up with a leg kick to the body, but Penny looks to be the fresher of the two fighters as the round starts. Daly looked a little tired, even though she struck first and scored first, but Penny then takes Daly down within the first minute of the round. The action stays on the ground for nearly the entire duration of round three, with Jessica Penny dominating the action and scoring with some ground and pound. Uh, the action goes back to the feet for the final minute of round three, with Daly trying to turn things up. And she was a little successful trying to turn things up, but it was a little too little, a little too late from Daly. I scored round three, 10-9 Jessica Penny, making this one 29-28 Jessica Penny on my card. 
And I thought that was a pretty damn good fight there. Um, I actually thought that it was going to be over in two because I thought that if Isling Daly started out slow, that Jessica Penny would have won round one and then continued on and uh, won round two. So Jessica Penny defeats Isling Daly by decision in three rounds with scores of 29 28. All right, so Jessica Penny and Randa Marcos have moved on in the competition after the first two quarterfinal fights are over. Next week, we'll get to see the two remaining quarterfinal fights on the same night, which is going to be a great night of fights there. Uh, you know, Carlos Sparza, Tisha Torres, and uh, Joanne Calderwood and Rose Nalayuna. So those are going to be two great fights. And for those of you who aren't quite familiar with where these last four ladies are ranked, uh, we're going to see both of these fight next week. Number one ranked Carlos Sparza versus number three ranked Tisha Torres. Um, that fight is one that many fans are looking forward to. That should be a great fight because I know those two ladies have a little animosity built up between them there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that fight. And the winner of that fight will meet the number four ranked Jessica Penny in one of the two semifinal fights. And then we have the number two ranked Joanne Calderwood versus the number seven ranked Rose Namajunas. They will also be fighting next Wednesday. And the winner of that matchup will meet the number 14 ranked Ram Marcos in the other semifinal fight. And both of those fights are going to be great fights. Um, really excited to see what happens there. I mean, I, I, I'm really a fan of Joanne Calderwood and Rose Namajunas. And uh, Tisha Torres, I'm starting to become a fan of her there. I really... You know, like how she was all business on, on this episode of uh, uh, the last couple episodes of Tough, where you know, she didn't let the game plan get to her. Uh, she wasn't really about all the house drama and all that. So I, I really like that in a fighter. I know a lot of people nowadays, uh, the new fans especially, they're, you know, digging all the drama and, you know, the kind of shit talking that goes on between fighters nowadays, more, more along the lines of uh, entertainment antics, kind of like WWE style. I'm not really a fan of that, but a little shit talking I don't mind, but don't make it a circus of that. I'm not really into that. Okay, um, we've reached the end of the show here. Thanks for listening to our Tough 20 preview and recap series that we've been doing on the MMA Live chat show. And if you'd like to join us on the show to chat about some MMA, talk about the Tough 20 season, give your MMA fight predictions, or join us for some post-event discussion on the other shows that we do, we'd love to have you join us. Just go over to the MMA chat forums where we plan the shows, create an account, and let us know that you'd like to join us so we can give you access to the area of the site where we plan and coordinate the shows. The link to the forums is in the description of the video. And you can also find our other social networking links there as well. Okay, people, thanks again for listening. Truly appreciate it. And we will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.